Good evening everyone. Many of you have been asking me for an updated guide on how to use Katarina in the new season, so I thought I'd make that for you tonight. Now, Katarina is a character that looked very nerfed to me when I first read the patch notes, but having seen the changes in the game and understood them a little bit better, I have to say that I think this character is stronger than before, but she has seen some significant nerfs in a couple of important places, so we're going to go through all of that and give you my suggestions for how to play her in the new season. And I think I want to start by talking about jab strings, and this might actually be the most significant buff you got. It's very, very good. So the first thing you need to understand is that, that this is your 1-1, one, one, and it's a 10-frame block punisher for Katarina. It's unremarkable for that, except for the fact that it has a bunch of really good extensions. The first one is 1-1 uh, one, one forward, which is going to transition into Harrier, and this is better in the new season because of the fact that they've increased your ability to cancel a Harrier into full crouch by pressing down. It's 5 frames faster than it used to be, meaning that it's uh, much easier to get into full crouch off of this stance. It's good for Katarina to be in full crouch because you can see her boobies and she has a strong full crouch mix-up. So you can do uh, any of her uh, Harrier transitions like the 1-1, one, one, uh, the, uh, the back one and so on, but also this 1-1. Uh, one, one. Get into full crouch, you give them the honey tits and if you do catch them sort of spying for a nip slip you can give them the down forward 4 which is the main uh, low that is going to enable this mix-up and then you can mix that with uh, whatever mid you choose. But I think if you are going to be using this strategy, you might as well have some balls and go for the launcher, so I'm going to recommend the while standing too. But let's go back to the 1-1 one, one and keep talking about the different extensions. So you have 1-1-1, one, one, one. Uh, this is a very respectable and chunky mid at 23 damage, uh, super good, and it's completely uh, safe on block at minus 5, so this is a very good extension. And, and uh, reliable damage just on the fly. Now, uh, the way you're going to incentivize your opponent to duck into that mid is by using the 1-1-2, which is this palm thrust. And the reason they really want to duck this is, well, first of all, it is a duckable high, which is important, uh, <clears throat> but it also gives Katarina a significant advantage on block. It's actually plus 7, which is huge. It's rare for a move that is this fast and easy to use to give you that much on block, so it's super significant. Uh, and on hit, it gives you plus 9, which which is even better. Uh, it's uncomfortable for the opponent to stand around and be at a lot of minus frames against Katarina because she has good counter hit tools, uh, of course, but also a bunch of chunky big lows to enable her mix up. So it's not a character who you want to stand you know, in the grill of and be at a, a significant disadvantage. It's e easy for her in those situations to just uh, uh, create some sort of big opportunity for damage, right? So they want to duck the 112, and that means that they're going to eat the 111. So there's a lot of synergy between these two extensions, and that's not new in Season 2, but we're going to go a little bit deeper. So uh, the next extension is the 114. This is a launch punishable mid uh, that you can only really use if you're hard reading that your opponent's going to duck, and even then I think it's too risky. This was obscure in Season 1, and I think it's going to remain unused in Season 2. But the last extension, the 113, is a move that has been significantly improved, because this is plus minus zero on block now, which is very interesting. First of all, when you do get the hit here, uh, based on my... Uh, you know, fast testing. I just uh, tested it really quickly, but it seemed to me like the Axis Ramp up back 4 is guaranteed here. Uh, uh, Katarina gets that uh, up back 4 guaranteed on the ground in a lot of different situations for a guaranteed 20 damage, meaning that when you do get the hit with the 113, that's going to be a total of 40 damage, which is very big, so it's a significant mid. Um, and the way that your opponent can potentially deal with this is, uh, if we're going to record my opponent doing it here, like that. They can actually jab you out of this and then they're going to get a float combo. So if they're looking to deal with that string, that's something that they can do. Uh, I'm going to explain this later though, but I never think that a smart Tekken player who understands this situation is ever going to want to jab into those jabs looking to float that three. I don't think it's ever going to happen, and if it does, it's probably better for you than it is for your opponent. I'm going to explain why. But first of all, the significance of the plus minus zero on block is that there's not really a lot your opponent can do to interrupt you. They can trade with uh, their own jabs, but if you do one one three and get that blocked and then just go straight into a 1-1, one, one, maybe mixing that with a different extension, you have very difficult to deal with and fast pressure. And the, the best your opponent can do most of the time is try to uh, trade with that with their own jab. So very, very good, very, very fast. And uh, of course, 
because you have good counter hits if you're playing against people who are unaware of Katarina's current frame data and you're playing in slightly lower ranks, a 1-1-3 into a fast counter hit after it's blocked is going to work wonders for you against people who are unprepared. But let's explain why your opponent is never going to attempt to float this 3 um, with their jabs. And it's because of the improved, and this, these, these are the next very significant buffs, uh, the improved counter hit properties of the other extensions. So the 1-1-1 one, one, one got a, a very powerful 20, uh, 27 damage knockdown for its counter hit again I did some preliminary testing and it looks like the axis ramp is guaranteed for 47 but it gets even better when I tell you that the 112 it's just a full-on counter hit launcher and it's a high power one as well it's really good damage super super dangerous and so I think that your opponent if they know about this situation like I said is never going to be comfortable uh, trying to swing with jabs looking for the uh, one one uh, the one one three and trying to float that because it's just so dangerous because they're gonna get hit by the other extensions but they might also get counter hit for massive damage and so there's so much synergy going in between these di different options right now uh, because the one one two and enables the 111 and the 113. The only way to deal with the 113 is by jabbing into it, but that gets uh, cancelled out by the fact that the 111 and the 112 have extremely powerful counter hit properties, and you still have the ability of going into Harrier, dipping into full crouch really fast, and that's very good. So massive massive uh, buffs to her jab strings I think they're some of her best tools and having good jab strings is always good because uh, you're gonna use jabs anyway they're your main way to open up offense you usually get plus frames on block for a single one jab you can interrupt stuff you can float stuff but now Katarina can just uh, create mix-ups on the fly by applying her normal jab strings and it's gonna be very significant for her uh, let's move on to the next move and talk about the changes made to 3-3-3-3-3. Three, three, uh, three, 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 three. This was both buffed and nerfed and it's going to be applied in a completely different way in the new season. The way I used to use this move was you could uh, throw out the first couple of hits and because the whole thing is natural, if you could hit confirm it, you could keep going and get a massive chunk of damage. First of all, the damage was nerfed. It does a lot less damage now. Um, and they also made some of these partial extensions uh, punishable on block, meaning that you're not going to use it for those hit confirms as much anymore. It's much more dangerous and not as rewarding. But what they gave you instead is it has faster impact frames at... Uh, uh, 14 so you can use it as a 14 frame block punisher I've mentioned this before I don't think 14 frame block punishers are really all that good because 13 and down you can't use them 15 and up you're always going to want to use your 15 frame launcher because it's so much better so you have to punish specifically minus 14 which is relatively rare for this to see use as a block punisher but it can happen so if we record my opponent doing I think uh, axis ramp is exactly minus 14 on block if I'm not mistaken so that's uh uh, show an example of this as a block punisher. You can see the teal letters there are saying punish on the left side So you can see that it worked uh, that is something you can do with it But I don't think it's uh, very significant especially because you already have the 2-2 which is only 30 damage But it's faster uh, more reliable and it's going to give you a wall spot as well It is high though uh, and you also have the uh, new and improved 4424, which if you're very fast with it can be used as a 14 frame block puncher. If you're very good at getting it out fast, then you can use that for that. And uh, I've punished Axis Ramp with it in practice mode. It's not that difficult to do with a little bit of, uh, of practice. And so the, the capabilities of this as a block puncher are kind of limited, uh, if I'm honest. And we're going to talk uh, slightly more about this move in a bit. But I think what I want to do now is tell you what I think is the most uh, significant and fun change to Katarina's combo game in the new season and it, it still has to do with this move uh, previously on big targets uh, it, it would clip over on Kuma but on Gigas and Jack Katarina had a wall combo that was a jab down for one and then this uh, three string and that was a very high damage it was her uh, best option more or less against those characters not only is it good damage it's very good for wake ups it was uh, extremely good for her uh, but what they've done with the move right now is while you uh, can't use it for um, or why you can't get as much damage for using it against big targets, they've now made it so that it works as a wall combo uh, against all targets. And I was testing this against Elisa yesterday, who I think has the smallest hitbox in the game, and it worked just fine. Meaning that you have a completely new optimal wall combo that is extremely good. So if we're just going to do a quick Katarina combo here and try and carry this to the wall... You 
can see that just getting a normal hop kick from mid screen is going to lead uh, to between 90 and 100 damage for Katarina. She already had very good combo damage, very good wall carry and decent or above average wall game. But now that she has a new super consistent, super powerful and really good wall combo that works against all targets, it's a, an area of hers that w where she was already one of the best characters in the game and it's just even better. So her niche where she specializes in high powerful combo damage is sort of solidified and it's really helped by the fact that Katarina has such good launchers. I mean, you look at Chloe, another character who's uh, characterized by her absurdly high combo damage off of just some standard launchers, but the fact that her uh, ability to launch is so limited it makes that a lot worse. So if we're standing, if we uh, go over here to the wall, uh, because I think this is significant enough that we should uh, show a couple of examples, this is like a normal uh, combo that you would use previously for 55 off of this. You could use the uh, down forward, uh, one one into Harrier 4 for 59, which was good, or you could, you know, uh, do awkward things with the stomp into to access ramp which was uh, inconsistent but very good damage when it worked uh, but it was specific but now that you have the ability to just do this you see it's going to break 60 in this situation and it's good for wake ups and it works on all targets so it's just uh, a new uh, optimal wall combo and you should use it in my opinion in, in most situations I'm going to be uh, turning it into my bread and butter for the wall and I think it's so cool it's a, it's a lot of fun you know it's a she's supposed to be a kicking character and it feels good when you, you hit with moves like this with her uh, so let's leave the 3-3-3 um, three, three, three for now and talk briefly about uh, 4 for 2 four. a move that I don't think is very significant and that's controversial even when it did jail, I thought this move was uh, very overestimated by uh, most uh, players out there. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about it. So first of all, like I say, if you're very good, you might get it out at 14 frames because of uh, the fact that it comes out of a forward forward notation. Um, uh, but people were, were calling, you know, a 13 frame launcher uh, and stuff like that, which it isn't really. It did jail, however, which made it a little bit too good because you could throw it out from a range and every time you got the hit, you could just turn that into just a massive damage combo uh, for no significant risk to yourself. You see, it's above 70 damage. so. Uh, it was a little bit too good, and they uh, gave the opponent the ability to, uh, if we uh, turn them in uh, stand block and crouch, uh, gave the uh, ab opponent the ability to duck this second hit on reaction now, meaning that it is a lot worse. It is a lot, lot worse. Uh, you should only really be using it, uh, I think, when you know that it's going to connect. And because I think it's hard to get this out for 14, and because you have an amazing, amazing hop kick for 15, I think the uh, abilities or the capabilities of this move as a block punisher are extremely limited. I think it's mainly going to be a whiff punisher, but it is going to be good for that. It is super, super fast. It ha doesn't have a massive range, but it does cover a lot of ground. And like I say, it gives you uh, good damage. It's a little bit awkward to uh, um, uh, combo off of, but the recommendation I'm going to give you is run up down for two. Uh, sorry, uh, that's not it. Uh, the run up uh, and then down for two. And then after the down for two, do uh, four for four. Uh, Harrier 1 up back 4 for 73 that's the like highest out in the open uh, damage I found quickly so again uh, I'm sorry I uh, it got a little bit messy here but you're launching you're running up and doing down for 2 and then you're doing a 4 for 4 hold forward Harrier 1 up back 4 and that's uh, a little bit uh, if you to do in the beginning here but if you can get it down it's not that difficult and it's going to lead to good damage there is an easier version of this combo where you just use the uh, down for 1 for the second hit like this which works fine, it's a lot easier to do actually, and you get 71. That doesn't give you great um, wall carry, but you can uh, convert this and get your good wall carry by doing stuff like launch, down for one, down for one, and then just your normal down to Harrier 4, and you get a uh, really good wall carry as well. So uh, it's a solid launcher when you use it for that, but I'm going to call it mainly a whiff punisher. It definitely is not like a 13 frame block punisher uh, unless you can get that out super consistently. Uh, and uh, I think uh, players who can do that every time and not get ducked uh, a lot of the time and launched for messing up the timing are few and far between, but uh, I might be wrong. <laughs> So I don't think this move is all that significant at all. In fact, I think uh, the hop kick is still your best launcher and your best with punisher and just one of your most reliable and great moves uh, for the character overall. 
next, uh, let's talk a little bit about 444 because this is another super significant and sort of contentious point. And this is where it gets a little bit messy and difficult to understand. So uh, the main uh, nerve to this move is the fact that previously you could do uh, 444 like this or 44 and look for a counter hit. And if you got it, you had a massive uh, damage easier to do combo for Katarina. But when you uh, got it blocked, it was completely safe. And they've uh, made it so that it's not safe anymore. It's going to be minus 10 meaning that your opponent can punish this and uh, that means that Katarina who was constantly just in a lot of different situations uh, throwing this out looking for that counter it can't really do that uh, as risk free anymore so you have a couple of options for what you want to do instead you can combo just off of the um, counter it for by itself the standing for or you can create artificial safety by using her Harrier transition so first of all if we uh, record my opponent doing the 444 here like that, just show that it is uh, uh, possible to punish this with 10 frames right now. So I'm going to do a 1 2, you can see that punished. Uh, but if I do the exact same thing again and I uh, transition into a Harrier 1 straight afterwards, like that, let's try that exact same punish one more time. You can see that this uh, 10 frame block punish here is actually beat out by the Harrier 1 in this situation. Which means that you can, uh, b because the fact that all uh, 10 frame block punishers in the game, at least as far as I know, are highs, you can uh, beat them with this Harrier 1, which is significant because, like I say, you can create artificial uh, safety here. Another option that you can do is you can utilize the fact that you have better transitions into Harrier, uh, or from Harrier into full crouch in the new season, and you can do stuff like this. And if I try to punish it in the same way again, you can see that Katarina is comfortably, uh, comfortably going to be down there, uh, looking at my shoes, uh, watching me with uh, highs, you know, going straight over her, and that means I'm about to get uh, launched for uh, my troubles. So there is a way to make this move scary and uh, create artificial safety for it, but it's a lot more finicky, and it should be said that while you... Uh, uh, can still combo uh, after doing the Harrier 1, for example, on counter hit, it's a lot less good. Uh, the damage you're going to get is not as high. It's a little bit difficult to combo off of. Let's turn on uh, manual counter hit and just show you that it is completely possible. So, for example, if you want to keep on using this a whole lot and you don't want to distinguish between two different things you're doing on counter hit and block, you can just decide that you're going to do Harrier 1 every single time. And uh, uh, if you decide to do that, you can do uh, what would be a good option here, maybe... Uh, like that and you get 59 for example and I've done a couple of uh, sort of uh, clutch dash combos you can do here like if you do a very small dash right there uh, you can get um Uh, anyway, I'm not going to spend time showing you like difficult combos that I was practicing earlier. You can get above 60 damage here. It's uh, completely possible, even if you do transition into the Harrier 1. But it's uh, kind of difficult. But you can do it, and you're still going to get damage. Uh, and then sometimes maybe you just uh, go into the 4 looking for that uh, punish. And if you go under it, you can launch them with a while standing too. So uh, the string is still useful. But I think, honestly, the the best use of the move still, and the most easy to understand way to use it, is just apply like you were normally and if you have good instincts if you know when you're about to get a counter hit it's still going to be very useful you're going to use the exact same combo that you always were which is uh, really easy to do and high power good wall carry you know 65 plus damage every time and if you do mess it up and you do get blocked, you're going to eat a 10 frame uh, punish, which is, uh, in most cases, in most matchups, not that big. And I think the risk reward is still in favor of the move being very useful. But these are a couple of different options you can use to sort of uh, keep this uh, a factor. And I think it should still be used going forward. It's still a very good move. Um, but uh, let's leave the 4-4 uh, string behind us and talk about some other things. I think uh, now that we're talking about uh, the fact that this has a duckable element to it, let's also mention that uh, your opponent can now duck the um, the while standing 1-1, uh, which is uh, one of your block punishers. And the only real significance here is that you're only going to want to use this for punishment now, and you're not going to be able to apply it in any other situation because you risk getting launched. If this is a punish, then because the string is natural, it's going to be guaranteed, and they actually gave you improved uh, damage on 
uh, the string. So if you can see right here, it actually gives you 25 right now, which is pretty good. Still has the option of going into Harrier, and uh, Harrier has the option of going into Crouch. So that's still very good. Um, but it's like you get more damage, but you have to use it for proper punishment. You don't want to mess it up. So it's again, it's Namco telling you to put on your big boy pants and only use this uh, move when they, when you know that it's going to hit. Otherwise, you're going to get launched, but you're going to deserve to get launched. Um, the other uh, major thing is, uh, an, or nerf, the, the, the other duckable nerf, is the fact that it's now possible to uh, duck the second hit of this down for 1-1. One, one. This does not jail anymore, which means that, that when I first made my initial guide on Katarina for YouTube, the one big mistake I made was that I said that this string was duckable, and I got comments saying that that was wrong. And now, uh, you know, uh, much, much later that a guide is suddenly uh, ha has fewer mistakes in it because this is duckable and it doesn't jail anymore. It was very unique that this did jail, and it was very, very good. And if you look at similar moves, similar extensions from uh, a lot of different characters, whether it's Downford 1 4 from Elisa, uh, Downford uh, 1 1 from Miguel, uh, Akuma, all of these different characters, these extensions usually exist, but they tend to be uh, duckable, and Katarina's was not, which meant that it was better, uh, and it's not anymore. And I think that's very sad. It's going to limit you to uh, just using the down for one by itself most of the time, which you were doing anyway. Uh, and I think because your jab strings are so much stronger, you're still going to be very uh, powerful with your uh, offensive poking up close. So it's not uh, as huge, uh, but it is going to get you launched on occasion. And those times, it's going to feel really, really big. I think it's sad because this was so easy to use. Long range, uh, you know, 20 damage mid, completely safe, unduckable. Just throw it out, and it's like almost always a good thing. And it still has the Harrier transition, of course, as well. So, uh, yeah, it's an. Uh, Un unfortunate nerf to Katarina. Um, your uh, Toucan Tail, which is one of your best moves and a move that people are irritated with with Katarina, was actually buffed. You might have expected it to get nerfed, but this is uh, going to give you plus frames on block and is only, uh, sorry, plus frames on hit and only minus 14 on block now, meaning that a majority of the cast aren't going to be able to launch punish this move anymore, which I think is so good. Now, most lows that are uh, launch punishable are knockdown lows like this, and so the price you pay for the uh, knockdown is the, the, the launch ability on block. Because this doesn't knock down, maybe this feels kind of balanced, but the main thing about this move, I think, is the fact that it has insane range. It's one of the longest range lows in the game. I think it only gets outdone by maybe Elisa's down three, uh, but it's kind of like the same range as that move. This works for Oki. I use it for all kinds of setup after spikes and stuff. It's very, very good, and it works against good players. So a buff to this move is very significant, and you're going to be using it even more than you already were. So that's super cool. Uh, the next thing I'm just kind of riffing here with stuff that is coming into my mind right now is uh, we could talk a little bit about Katarina's wall bounce and the, the wall bounce move that they gave her is the uh, Harrier 4 which I felt uh, makes makes sense it's kind of thematic I guess for this move to be the wall bounce um, problem being that I don't think it's very good for that and I'm going to explain why let's do the one with the new uh, wall combo so we can see how much damage it does So very, very good when it does hit. The reason I don't think that this is going to work for a lot of uh, wall bouncing, and I mentioned this in my earlier videos on the character in Season 2, is that uh, they haven't given you enough, um, or they, they're not giving the opponent enough incentive to try and duck Harrier. And the reason for that is, well, first of all, you have uh, only two options out of this stance that your opponent will want to try and duck. The first one is the Harrier 3, which is a powerful knockdown low that was buffed in the new season because it now uh, gives you a completely guaranteed access ramp as well for 43, which is very, very big. So this is scarier than ever. It does still have the uh, low crush properties when it goes in. But the problem with the move is that it is reactable. You can react to this animation because of how slow it is. So a fast opponent will not try to preemptively duck this move. They will try and look for it and only duck after they've uh, seen that it's going to come out, which means that it's difficult to use this though to force your opponent to duck unless they're uh, unsure of their ability to actually react to it, which happens a lot, but a really good level, you know, high level player offline is not going to preemptively try and duck these. He's, he's going to try and react to it. The other thing you can do to incentivize your opponent to duck, and this is a new move in the new season, 
is the fact that you have access to your 1 plus 2 throw, down 1 plus 2, out of Harrier. And this is uh, going to make your opponent feel very claustrophobic and can be a good move to duck. Except for the fact that, again, you can react to this. And because the stance only has one throw, it is completely impossible to mix this throw up with something else. You have to do the 1 plus 2 break. A good opponent can wait for this throw, react to it, and confidently break it 1 plus 2. So the only two options that force your opponent to duck are options that... Um, a good opponent is going to wait for and react to not try to preemptively duck which means that unlike how the 1-1-2 uh, forces the opponent to try and duck which makes you able to hit with the 1-1-1 one, 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 as we talked about in the beginning the other options in Harrier are not strong enough to incentivize the opponent to attempt and duck uh, Harrier 4 meaning that it's not going to be doing a whole lot of uh, wall bouncing because you need to sort of uh, make your opponent duck for that to work um, However, if your Harrier transitions into full crouch and the mix-ups you're applying from down here are fast enough and good enough that your opponent's going to be very scared and want to duck some of those, then maybe that is something that will enable you to use the Harrier 4 more effectively. And if that's the case, then uh, maybe this is a little bit better than I uh, am assuming, but I haven't used that in practice yet, so I'm going to have to try and see if that's a viable strategy. And in those cases where I feel like my opponent might actually try and duck Harrier, I always want to go for the Harrier up for 3 because that gives you the access ramp for a guaranteed 40 damage and it's completely safe on block unlike the Harrier 4 so um yeah, uh, I'm not, uh, I mean, it's cool and it makes sense, but I don't think Katarina has a wall-bouncing character, and whether or not your character is a wall-bouncing character is just going to depend on what move they gave you for the wall-bounce, and I think it's kind of sad that they only gave you, like, an average of one per character, because if you got one that isn't all that useful, then uh, the feature is pretty much a no-go for your character and just a dud, so there you go. Next, let's, let's talk about something very fun. Let's talk about forward 1 plus 2 and uh, back forward 1 plus 2. In uh, a couple of earlier videos when I was talking about Katarina, long before we knew about the patch notes of Season 2, I suggested that they give Katarina a, a small amount of plus frames for getting her headbutt blocked because I th think it makes sense for the move. It's something that she lacks and uh, the move wasn't currently seeing any use. And that's exactly what happened. So I'm very happy that they made exactly a change that I was sort of... Uh, thinking that I wanted to see for the character and that it was this specific um, but this now gives you plus frames on block which is very very good especially since you're playing a counter hit character and you can set up counter hits using that um, it's a super good move now for hit and block it's going to give you the knockdown on hit and it's going to give you plus frames on block it is a duckable high but it has a uh, longer range than you would expect uh, so it's very very decent and it also comes out of the uh, back four the back four is a counter hit move that you've always had one of your longer range counter hit tools and a decently good one only really uh, you know pretty good Katarina players really use it a lot because you need to know how but it's a, a very decent move um, but you can use the one extension here and if they uh, try and duck this what they ca which they can do uh, let's show you the fact that that's possible uh, and that I'm not lying. You can see that they can duck that second option. Uh, this would uh, mean that the string was uh, use, uh, useless and you couldn't really use it uh, for much because of how telegraphed it is unless they gave you some sort of mid mix-up. Uh, and then they just went and gave you a really good mid, mid, mid mix-up. So uh, they sort of fixed that right away out of the gate. And so the entire reason this new move, this new weird move where Katarina does uh, a cartwheel and then puts uh, something in her pocket, I wonder what it is. Uh, exists because she needs something that is mid to mix up the uh, high extension here otherwise this would be uh, a useless string and now you can do this on hit you're gonna get uh, well first of all both extensions are natural which is big so it's very good as long as the bank four hits you're gonna get whatever you do after that guaranteed but if you get it blocked and you do the uh, headbutt and that gets blocked then you're at uh, plus frames which is good and if your opponent tries to duck then you can do uh, this card wheel, the back four, three plus four. This is punishable on block, even though it is mid, and I was testing it out in practice mode just a couple of hours ago, and I was able to punish it with uh, 12 frames, but not with 13, so uh, unless I'm missing something, I think this is minus 12, and forces full crowd, which is, which is better, because you, you would usually prefer, I think, to eat a 12 frame while standing punisher, as opposed to uh, a standing 12 frame punisher, because there are a couple of characters who have really good stuff for that, and there are a couple of characters who have good stuff for that for 12 as well, 
spells such as Dragonov and so on. But it is punishable, but it is the mix-up for your uh, headbutt. You can use the normal headbutt by itself, and I think these are just really good moves now. And uh, kind of like a bootleg crappier version of back one from Brian. Uh, that's high <laughs> and not as good, but very, very decent and a respectable and cool new change. I really like it because, um, you know, few characters can just do a move and get plus frames on block right, uh, like that. They usually have to, you know, do something that uh, puts them at risk somehow. Uh, all right, what is the next change we need to talk about? Uh, I know I'm uh, probably missing a couple of important things here. Let me think for a little bit. All right, uh, yeah, your elephant move, uh, where she makes weird elephant sounds. This is her backswing blow or her bootleg back backswing blow. It was never really used before, and uh, looking at this animation, I can't see that it uh, was changed in any way. But it turns out that they actually did buff the uh, crush properties of this move quite significantly, and I can show that to you. And I was testing this; I was really surprised by how solid it actually seems to be. Uh, so if we uh, do, uh, no, that's that's not going to work. Let's do. Uh, uh, let's do uh, down forward one back two. That should work. And now I'm gonna try and interrupt here with a down forward one. And you can see I can do that quite confidently. I can catch her with mids, but if I try to do highs, she's gonna go under those and actually launch me, which is kind of crazy. So it does have some pretty significant crush properties now. They uh, wrote in the patch notes that they've added crouch status, but I think all it means is that it has some pretty significant high crush. It doesn't dip back all that much, and her head doesn't really go down all that much either, so it's kind of confusing, but maybe this is better than I thought. Problem being that they made it minus 17 on block, meaning that it's launch punishable for a majority of the cast, and that makes me feel like this move is gonna remain crap, unless you have very specific setups where you know exactly uh, that you want to use it in but uh, if you do and if you know your opponent's going to do jabs then uh, try it out I mean it might be a pretty good launcher it's so obscure that I don't even know uh, how to combo off of it but I guess you could do something like that and get decent damage so yeah uh, that's pretty crazy and it sounds very funny and we laughed a lot about it before and I, I'm still sort of shocked that they uh, uh, did this to the move, but it's it, it exists and it is I, I guess a buff, but it's very risky Don't go relying on it too hard if you want a back swing blow. I think uh, back uh, three plus four is um, a Very good option. I've always loved this move and this is another thing that they buffed about Katarina It's minus 14 if I'm remem remembering the patch notes correctly right now Which means that it's a lot better. This was all already difficult to punish because it's a two-hit move You can get caught by the second hit and it also has good enough range that it's difficult to punish But it can happen, but now that it's minus 14 You don't have to worry that much about it at all and this has good crush properties because you can see she dips both back and down And it gives you a uh, good wall spots and all the rest of it So if you're not using uh, this as a strategic backswing blow when you're at, uh, for example, at massive uh, minus frames, then you should. I should also mention that if you want some good tech against Leo when he, uh, she's applying her uh, famous uh, back for one mix ups from uh, King K, you can actually use this move to dip back entirely out of the second hit of that string and beat it every time if you do it fast enough. But it's very possible, it's not that difficult to do. Uh, you also saw uh, buffed your power crush that was crappy before. This is uh, basically the same move, uh, move, but just has better frame data, and you should be using it a little bit more. Uh, Harrier F2 uh, was a significantly buffed move out of Harrier that we should talk about. It's another counter hit launch that you have right now. And now, you know, you can see that Katarina just has powerful counter hit launchers all over the place. It's really kind of silly just how many good counter hit launchers she has. She has uh, down two, she has down uh, forward four, she has standing four, she has um, the new Harrier two, she has uh, four forward three, obviously amazing. She has uh, what else? Uh, moves that we've talked Yeah, the 1-1-2. One, one, I mean, the list just keeps on going. So she's uh, very much a counter-hit character, and uh, I think that's enabled by the fact that she has better jabs, so I think it's uh, a cool thing for the character. Um, but uh, if we're going to try and wrap this up, even though I know I am missing a couple of things, I think the way you want to play Katarina in conclusion in the new season is she's very good at jabbing and creating a lot of pressure up close, and that is what's going to enable you to set up all of your powerful counter hits. So you're going to remain a powerful, close up, uh, aggressive counter hit character. The main difference between you and Miguel, however, being that Katarina is always going to be extremely respectable at a range, however, and so you can adapt to your pace to whoever you're playing against because unlike Miguel out here your stuff is super good because in my opinion probably your best and most remarkable move overall with Katarina the 443 has remained uh, unchanged 
You can still get it out of Harrier if you want to create an artificial telegraph for the move. And the reason that's important to do is that it's a way to uh, stress the opponent out and force them to duck it. But you get guaranteed access ramp off of this for 40 damage. It's safe. It crushes lows. It has great range. It hits grounded. It's amazing. The toucan tail is better than ever, which is obviously huge. Um, and the only thing you kind of lack from out here is a good homing move you can use for Ford 4, but it's a little bit slow. But you kind of just have to dash with your opponent and time your stuff pretty well. Uh, you can throw out the occasional Harrier 3 now, and when you get the hit with that, the uh, Axis Ramp is now guaranteed for 43, which is huge. Um, and then your main whiff punisher when you're playing that defensive game is, I think, going to remain your hop kick, which I think might be the best hop kick in Tekken. I think this is uh, a fantastic launcher, and it's good enough that I'm not that uh, you know impressed with the uh, new 4424. But that's another good uh, whiff punishing tool that you have. But you're so, uh, sort of able to do kind of everything with Katarina, and the uh, thing where you really excel and specialize is after connecting with those good uh, launchers and those good counter hits, your combo damage is just going to be better than ever, and your wall game is going to be better than ever and you're just continuously going to be collecting uh, some of the best combo damage in the game and doing it reliably because you're good at launching and good at comboing and you have consistent high damage combos with built in wall carry and I've just turned on rage here because I want to see uh, what happens when you use the uh, uh, the Katarina rage drive from this range and see some uh, really insane damage so again, uh, because her rage drive is also an indication that that's the way she's supposed to be used. You're supposed to just uh, do ball or combo damage with her, and that's what she uh, specializes in. The significant nerfs are, of course, the uh, duckability of a couple of your moves. Uh, as for the fact that this can now be punished, the 444, I think it's going to remain a uh, powerful move, and I think the fact that you will eat the occasional 10-frame uh, punish here is uh, kind of fine maybe try and play around a lot more with Harrier. I think you should be uh, using it uh, and going into a Crouch a lot of the time. That's a very good option. It was always good for Katarina. It's good for Oki. One thing that you can do with her is you can spin and you can use the Harrier transition to go into uh, a full Crouch like that for the Oki and then really stress your opponent out with stuff uh, for the uh, Oki from full Crouch. Uh, but I'm kind of rambling right now, so I'm just going to try and wrap it up. Uh, but yeah... Uh, those are just my thoughts on the changes that uh, came to mind. Uh, I did make a list, but I know there are things that weren't written on this, so I'm sorry about that. But thank you so much for watching the video, and I think Katarina is going to be uh, strong in the new season. She's always been good, so if you enjoyed her in the past, you're going to be able to enjoy her now. But uh, you're going to have to put on your big boy pants a little bit, because it's going to be slightly less about just throwing this 4 out, or the 4 4 4 out, and collecting free high damage combos. You're going to have to create them or think a little bit more creatively about them. You're going to uh, eat uh, punishes on occasion. You're going to have to do some stance cancelling and so on. But that's a small price to pay for the fact that you now have uh, some of the best jab strings in the game. Uh, you know, good uh, plus frames uh, off your headbutt and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.